You might have heard about 5 nanometers, then 3 nanometers coming out of TSMC. Well, this is Intel's new Panther Lake. Not 5 nanometers, not 4, not 3, 18 angstroms. Yeah, they needed to switch to a new unit because we're getting pretty small now. It's smaller and it's denser and it could change how our laptops feel when we build code and run local models. And last week I visited Intel's Arizona fab. It was huge. I couldn't film inside, unfortunately. Top secret stuff. But I left with enough to ask the only questions that matter for developers and LLM tinkers. Will builds finish faster? Will tokens per second go up? Will battery life stop crying? However, the only thing I have to go on is what they showed. I don't have any units to test yet. That's coming up hopefully very soon. For now, all we have is some numbers and I saw some demos that they presented live. And what Panther Lake aims to do is to bring Lunar Lake style efficiency together with Arrow Lake style multi-core performance all in one chip. I've tested a bunch of Lunar Lake stuff on the channel as well as Arrow Lake stuff. If you've been following along, you know, software developer tests, compilation times, run times, and LLMs. And the same thing kept occurring. Lunar Lake, very underpowered as far as performance goes, but the battery lasts a long time. Arrow Lake <laughs> uses a lot of power, but the performance is actually really good. And Panther Lake is supposed to combine those two things in one chip. There's a whole new revamped runtime that can route AI work across CPU, GPU, and NPU dynamically. That's gonna be interesting to test because normally we wanna run our compilations on the CPU, but we wanna run our models, our LLMs on the GPU or the NPU. I don't want that stuff touching the CPU because it's gonna slow things down. We want that stuff running in parallel using the graphics processing. So we'll see about that when that comes out. Let's talk about the CPU because this is where your tests are gonna run, your builds are actually gonna feel faster. Panther Lake keeps the hybrid design, fast P cores for bursty single threaded operations and efficient E cores for throughput. By the way, these charts are, you know, the marketing team drew them up, but <laughs> obviously, but it seems to have worked for Apple. So uh, why not? If you're gonna be showing such huge drastic changes, you better be able to back that up, right? So hopefully they did that. So you get a performance cluster with four P cores plus up to eight more E cores on the compute tile and a low powered island with four E cores on its own power rail. And yes, I did not memorize this. I'm reading this off because I don't know. What matters to me more is how it actually performs in real world scenarios, not all these numbers, but to some of you, maybe the numbers will be interesting because the numbers is all we have right now. The P cores, codenamed Cougar Cove. <sighs> please, please don't do that again, Alex. Please, for everybody's sake. You know, I never followed Intel's naming scheme, but now I'm starting to finally figure it out and it's starting to click. The cores are have their own names, like Cougar Cove. This is a nice chart of that. In Panther Lake, it's called Cougar Cove. In Lunar Lake, it was Lion Cove and in Arrow Lake. And then in Meteor Lake, it was Redwood Cove. These are the P cores performance. And then E cores had their own name like Crestmont, Skymount, and now in Panther Lake, Darkmont. So on Cougar Cove, Intel focused on smarter, not wider. So that means snap your single thread for editor responsiveness. Probably your Electron apps are gonna go faster. So that's gonna be a win for VS Code, for example, and editors like that. P cores together with the E cores, which are efficiency cores, add up to 16 cores total. E cores add more efficiency tricks like nanocode and loop stream gating. Basically the net effect is that it's supposed to be snap your single thread and steady your multi-thread at lower watts. Now the GPU is going to have some nice updates. There is a brand new architecture, the XE3 iGPU. This XE3 GPU tile can have either four cores or 12 XE cores. There's going to be three different configurations of this chip. One, two, and three. This is the big one right here. So bigger caches, better utilization, plus XMX engines for int 8, FP16, BF16, TF32. These are the matrix multiplication engines. That's gonna be useful for quantized 7B to 34B local models without an eGPU. So we're still gonna be size limited as we typically are on iGPUs, but it's supposed to be faster. NPU is another story. NPUs are very vendor specific. That's why you don't see too many libraries addressing them. Only very special software that's for Intel only or for AMD only really uses the NPU, but 
supposedly with open vino 2025 you're going to be able to dynamically allocate it based on the workload based on the chip that you're running this npu is going to be gen 5 with fp8 and programmable activations fp8 is a pretty good quantization for uh, very little loss but still being small enough to be able to run on small devices and as i mentioned open vino 2025 is going to be the new version that can route the work across the cpu the gpu and the npu i'll of course have to test the impact of this in tokens per second and watts later on when i get these devices in how does this compare with real numbers that we have right now so recently i just did an aero lake mini pc test here's one of them this is the b-link gti 15 this does have a pci slot you can check out the video i'll link to that down below but this has the aero lake chip in it it's the core ultra 9 285h and i confirmed that it did run pretty high wattage even at idle time. But the numbers that I got, the performance numbers, is kind of what we can expect from Panther Lake, maybe with a slightly higher performance. So these days I'm constantly flipping between models. GPT-40 for notes and email, Claude for code refactors, Flux for image generation, Kling for video, four tabs, four bills, and counting. Enter chat LLM teams. There's one dashboard that houses every top LLM and route LLM picks the right one for you for a given task. O4 mini high for for fast answers, Claude Sonnet 3.7 for coding, Gemini 2.5 Pro for big context, and even adds GPT 4.1 before ChatGPT has it. Chat with PDFs and PowerPoints, then generate decks and docs and do deep research all in the same chat. Need human sounding copy? The humanized toggle rewrites text to beat AI detectors. Spin up agents and run code with AI engineer. I built my first bot in just minutes. Track artifacts, create GitHub pull requests, and debug from the same interface. Need visuals? No problem. Use Flux or Ideogram and Recraft for images, Kling, Luma, and Runway for video all built in. And the kicker is just $10 a month, less than one premium model. Head over to chatllm.abacus.ai or click the link in the description and level up with Chat LLM Teams. Looking at Geekbench, Arrow Lake multi-core was about 15,000. Panther Lake should hit similar numbers at about 30 to 40% lower CPU power. I know it doesn't sound like amazing, but it's gonna be really good when it comes to running in a laptop because that means you're gonna be able to run really powerful things really fast and still have 24 hour battery. I'm not quoting how much battery is gonna be, very vendor specific, right? We don't know those numbers yet, but long battery life is what we're after. On X86 architecture, speedometer 3.1 on Arrow Lake was about 38.5. So I'm expecting about 40 to 44 on Panther Lake. That's from those smarter bursts. The .NET large project build that I did with 100,000 namespaces and classes. The Arrow Lake machine took about 88 to 94 seconds to build that at 70 to 80 watts usage. I'm estimating Panther Lake to be about 75 to 80 five seconds at lower watch thanks to better sustain and perf per watt at idle arrow lake was about 45 watts in my setup panther lake target mid to high 30s now of course this is going to be all oem dependent that means that maybe lg will make something different uh, maybe dell will have a different uh TDP, right? So depending on how each manufacturer is going to tune their devices, we're going to have very different performance. For example, mini PCs have a lot more cooling going on than laptops, so they might be able to push those same chips a little bit harder. Now when it comes to LLMs, Quinn 34 on CPU, 14.4 tokens per second on Arrow Lake, and expecting about uh, 20 to 28 tokens per second with Open Vino 2025 on Panther Lake. That would be a huge jump, and that would be really nice to see. On the iGPU, even better. So we're looking at 23 tokens per second on Arrow Lake, Panther Lake with the XE3 12 XE cores, 30 to 38 tokens per second is just my rough estimate here. GPT OSS 20 billion on CPU Arrow Lake was about 17.6 tokens per second. Panther Lake Open Vino 2025 estimated at 25 to 32 tokens per second. And finally, Llama 3, 70 billion parameter, the dense model with partial offload was really bad, 1.5 to 1. .5 eight tokens per second you're gonna want to offload that to a more powerful gpu right even though it might be a little faster on panther like maybe two tokens per second 2.2 is still not usable so don't expect too much on running large dense models here now two other things were sort of announced one was announced the snapdragon x2 elite last year the snapdragon or was it 2023 already when snapdragon x1 
well, it was called X Elite, but we know it now as X1 Elite. That really turned pages because it was an ARM-based chip. It was very performant and it lasted a really long time. I've done extensive tests on it. Now the Snapdragon X2 Elite and X2 Elite Extreme were announced. So that's coming out. It was just announced. It's not out yet, but it's official. What we don't have officially yet is the actual numbers. Notebook Check got invited to the event uh, in Hawaii. I did not. Um, it's okay. I don't need to go. It's okay. Um, I can just see other people's reviews. But this is the uh, their reference machine. It was running Geekbench. Pretty good scores right there. 4,083 is what we see for single core. 23,349 for multi-core. Wow, really nice. Very close to M4 max speeds for that multi-core score and single core. Again, I'm gonna wait until I actually get these machines in here to be able to test these out for you folks. So definitely don't miss those. Apple M5. Another one, this was a leak. One iPad with an M5 chip fell off the truck. And again, the Russian leakers got it. This is not official and it's not verified. So we got pretty high scores though. 4133 for single core and 15437 for multi-core, which means the M5 Pro and M5 Max are gonna be beasts. I'm showing these only for scale right now, not verdicts, so stay tuned. So the bottom line for developers and LLM tinkers, Panther Lake promises Air Lake class speed at noticeably lower power, which is becoming more and more important these days. Snappier single thread for editors and tools and CLIs, steadier multi-thread for big builds, a larger XE3 architecture iGPU that helps with quantized models, and an NPU Gen 5 that's useful for everyday pipelines, not just slides, but, you know, the software has to be there. These are still vendor claims until retail units actually ship. Results will vary with cooling, memory configs, and drivers, especially for bigger models, especially since, I almost forgot, you're able to change the memory configuration here. Either you can solder the RAM with LPDDR5, which we've seen work very well, up to 96 megatransfers per second, but up to 96 gigabytes of RAM available. So that's a limitation. I can't believe I'm saying that, but it is now at this point or you can get up to 128 gigabytes but that's with a slight slowdown 7200 mega transfers per second still plenty fast if you're using sodem so that's the replaceable ram in the comments down below tell me what you want to see first which models you want me to test open vino versus igpu versus uh stable diffusion or npu whatever you just just write it down below and let me know what you think. Panther Lake, something you're interested in? Comment down below and I'll run it in the launch review, hopefully. Otherwise, watch my video about this mini PC I just did right over here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.